So we will get started. Thank you everyone for coming to today's diversity and inclusion session on uh, what is really an introduction to the diversity, equity and inclusion office. My name is Tamina Joffrey and I'm the Director of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion here at Yorkville University and Toronto Film School. Um, I do want to let you know this is going to be live streamed and recorded as well, so it will be available later on for everyone to watch. I want to actually start off with an Indigenous land acknowledgement. Uh, we reaffirm our responsibility to increase awareness and understanding of First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples and colonial legacy and commit to strengthening our relationship with Indigenous peoples throughout Canada. And I'd like to acknowledge that the land Toronto Film School operates on is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabeg, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit and Métis. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. We acknowledge that the land Toronto Film School Online operates on in New Brunswick is the traditional territory of the Wabanaki Confederacy, the Mi'kmaq, the Wolostic Malasite First Nation. We also acknowledge that the applicable treaties for this region are referred to as the Peace and Friendship Treaties. On the Yorkville University side, we acknowledge that the land at Yorkville University operates on in the following provinces in Ontario is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabeg, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and many diverse First Nations, Inuit and Métis. We acknowledge that the applicable treaty for this region is referred to as the Toronto Purchase. In British Columbia, we operate on the traditional unceded territories of the Coast Salish people, of the Kukite and Kwikwetlam First Nations, and in New Brunswick, we operate on the traditional territory of the Wabanaki Confederacy, the Mi'kmaq, and the Wolostic Malasite First Nation, um, and we acknowledge that the applicable treaties for this region are referred to as the Peace and Friendship Treaties. I want to highlight uh, the fact that diversity, equity and inclusion is a critical component of life at Yorkville University and Toronto Film School, and we're committed to making sure that these values are an integral part of our culture. We're committed to ac academic and professional excellence and at the same time committed to providing educational services and employment that are focused on promoting the principles of diversity, equity and inclusion. And both of our presidents, both Dr. Julia Christensen Hughes, who's the president of Yorkville University, and Andrew Barnsley, who's the president of Toronto Film School, are very much committed to promoting uh, these values. Um, and just uh, another point as well, I know you're going to, um, if you have any questions or comments, you can definitely put them in the Q&A and we'll definitely get to them uh, near the end of the webinar. I also want to introduce myself. My name is Tamina Joffrey, as I mentioned. Um, some people also call me TJ for short. As I mentioned, I'm the Director of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion, and I'm really here to help with any advice or consultation on diversity, equity and inclusion matters. And that includes for students as well. Um, part of my role is also looking at implementing the new proposed diversity and inclusion strategic plan for the organization and our commitment to diversity equity and inclusion in the classroom. You're more than welcome to connect with me at my email address, which is tjaferi at yorkvilleu.ca. So before we get into um, some of the more common DEI uh, issues that students face, I actually wanted to uh, break it down in terms of definitions around diversity, equity, and inclusion, and what do these concepts actually refer to? So when we're looking at diversity, we are looking at the wide range of human characteristics um, that all of us share and, and have um, different intersecting uh, characteristics, whether that is disability, um, family status, race, citizenship, uh, creed, religion, sex, um, sexual orientation, gender identity, gender expression. Um, and many of these identity characteristics actually relate to protected human rights code grounds under um, legislation that we have in Canada, but they also go above and beyond some of those code grounds to include aspects like educational background and geographical region as well. 
When we're looking at equity, this is really about acknowledging that equal access to opportunities and services may require the removal of barriers that marginalized equity seeking communities experience in trying to obtain this access. So it's really getting at the fact that we don't all start from a level playing field um, when we're trying to access education uh, or other opportunities like work opportunities and that um, this is actually a requiring proactive barrier removal. And then lastly, when we're looking at inclusion, we're looking at making, making sure that individuals feel welcomed in the academic and workplace environments and that they can bring their authentic um, selves to both the educational and work spheres. I also want to touch upon the concept of intersectionality as well. Um, you may have already heard of this concept, but it really does relate a lot to DEI. Um, and intersectionality was a term that was coined by critical race scholar Kimberly Crenshaw in 1989. And it's looking at the fact that um, our identities have multiple intersecting dimensions. Um, and as a result of that, the way in which we experience inequities or barriers to opportunity is quite complex and multi-layered depending on the interplay of these dimensions. So as you can see in this diagram here, um, our identities are, are made up of a number of these different uh, elements um, and, and they intersect, whether that's race intersecting with class or sexuality or mental and physical health and so on. So as an example, um, in terms of intersectionality, look at the ways in which um, the experience of barriers is compounded for someone that has, for example, a mental health disability, such as depression. Uh, they also might be Black in terms of their racial identity, and they also are transgender. So this particular individual would experience um, inequities in a very different way based on these intersections of their mental health, their race, and also their gender identity and their gender expression. Um, and their, their experience in the classroom or in university or at, um, at the film school would be very different from, from someone else. And so it's really important for us to take these uh, different characteristics into consideration when we're looking at how we can remove barriers for different people. In addition to that, um, we have a, a new proposed diversity and inclusion strategic plan, um, which is also an implementation and is really looking at YU and TFS's commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion in the classroom and ensuring that we have a discrimination and harassment free um, environment as well. And some of the strategic focus areas of this particular plan are communications, making sure that diversity is reflective in the types of communications that we're putting out, um, looking at ways in which we can collect diversity data, policy review. Um, another aspect of this is training and capacity building. So having workshops such as this one, where we're really trying to build more awareness around DEI. Um, and also one of the other aspects of this plan was uh, the convening and implementation of diversity advisory councils, where um, students, faculty, and staff can feel uh, like there's a feedback mechanism where they can share their views. And the plan is really mostly about creating safe spaces for dialogue as well. I want to touch upon our um, amazing diversity advisory councils. We have both faculty and staff and student diversity advisory councils. And I want to highlight the student diversity advisory councils for you. So we have one for YU and one for TFS. And it's a really great venue where you can bring up any DEI issues that matter to you, either through your peers or myself, um, as I also sit on these councils. And the websites uh, for both YU and TFS have more information on the members um, who are all amazing and working collectively at YU and TFS to promote DEI and ensure that student voices are heard when it comes to decision making. So I'm often going to these councils when I'm uh, implementing new diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives across the organization that also affects students as well. 
I want to highlight uh, our awesome advisory council members on the YU Student Diversity Advisory Council. Uh, we have Sura Al-Mansour, who is a BBA student, who I believe is here as well. Um, so thanks for saying hi in the Q&A and, and the chat, Sura. Uh, Devani Savalia, who's a BID student. Demi Babatunde, who's an MACP student. Clay Roth, who's also in the MACP program. And uh, Ali Noor as well, who is our awesome student life coordinator in Ontario. Um, and they're all able to be contacted through the University Outlook directory as well if you type in their names. On the TFS uh, Student Diversity Advisory Council, um, we have our great members, Hassam al Agbari, who's in the film production program, and Linka Nitarika, who's in the acting for film, TV, and theater program. Uh, we've had some students uh, who have moved on because they've graduated. So this is certainly um, an area where you can stay tuned for other calls of expression that we'll put out for people to apply to be on the Diversity Advisory Council. And as I mentioned, uh, you can connect with any of these members uh, by searching for them on the Outlook directory as well. I also want to touch upon Indigenous student inclusion and feedback. Yorkville University and Toronto Film School's commitment to Indigenous truth and reconciliation is very strong. And right now we're trying to um, continue to form meaningful relationships of mutual understanding and dialogue with Indigenous communities. Um, and currently, I am in partnership with the manager of Indigenous and Partnership Engagement, whose name is Jessica Grushi. Um, we're currently looking at ways to engage ind Indigenous students so that they have a similar mechanism for providing specific feedback on their experiences. So if you are an Indigenous student and you'd like to participate in an upcoming focus group with Jessica and I, I would really encourage you to please contact me at tjaferi at yorkvilleu.ca um, so that you can be a part of those focus sessions as well. I also want to talk about the LGBTQI2SA plus uh, safe spaces initiatives for any students who identify with the community. We have regular Zoom drop-in sessions for students that um, identify, who need support, and who want to just socialize with others in the community uh, in order to um, build that network of care and, and support. And so those are usually on Wednesdays um, from 10.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to 11.30 a.m. And we have a wonderful uh, staff member, Lucky Core, who actually facilitates those sessions. So please do visit MyYU and MyTFS if you are interested in joining these sessions. Um, you, if you go on both MyYU and MyTFS, you'll actually see an icon for the Safe Spaces initiative that you can click on, and that will help you get connected uh, with the Zoom link and also with Lucky if you'd like to as well. Um, we also have a Safe Spaces toolkit that we uh, promote as well. And that really helps us in making sure that there are some guidelines around the convening of these types of positive spaces. And it also provides referrals to relevant supports in the community as well. Another awesome initiative that I want to highlight for students is the diversity calendar. So again, this is also available on MyYU and MyTFS. There's a specific icon uh, where you can access the calendar. And this was actually launched earlier in the year. Uh, you would have gotten um, a communication about it. And this is an awesome tool because it's really about promoting and respecting cultural faith and diversity days of significance. Um, so you it's a really an educational uh, tool that you can learn more about the, the diversity that exists within our TFS and YU communities. And I would also highly recommend referring to this tool when you're planning for any absences from assignments um, and you may need an academic accommodation. So I would definitely recommend that you please get in touch with the Academic Accommodations and Accessibility Office to 
request such accommodations if you need them. Um, and I want to give a shout out to our, our great creative and branding team who worked on this to make sure that the diversity of our communities are reflected in this. So I would, I would encourage you to take a look at it because it's quite beautiful and um, definitely represents a, a wide range of the um, wonderful diversity that exists uh, at both TFS and YU. And speaking of the Academic Accommodations and Accessibility Office, uh, we have an amazing team who is there to support you if you ever do need an academic accommodation. Um, so we have Oshima Rostogi, who's the interim director of the office and three academic accommodations and accessibility specialists, Mira Mandel, Samuel Dunsinger and Maria Ortega. And all of them have 20 plus years combined experience of working with individuals with disabilities and they really help support students with disabilities to navigate and access post-secondary education um, through academic accommodations. And um, they're also really helpful in building and enhancing institutional processes to improve accessibility. So if you do need to get in touch with them, the easiest way is to email them at accessibility at yorkvilleu.ca. I also want to highlight the mental health and wellness department as well, who are doing an, an equally important job in terms of providing free and confidential mental health counseling for students. Uh, so we have the director of mental health and wellness, Shauna Thompson, and then five mental health counselors, Goli Shamlu, who's operating um, in BC, and then Friha Mian, Bertina Tan, uh, Tatum Bedard, and Tiara Ibrahim as well who split their work between um, YU and TFS students. So you can see that there are Jane app links here as well um, that are available and you can please feel free to go ahead and book any confidential um, free appointments with our amazing mental health counselors, especially at a time like this during COVID um, when you know all of us, it's, it's really normal to be able to, um, to need that kind of a support. So I would highly recommend recommend getting in touch with them. I also want to talk about um, student life as well. Uh, we've got an amazing array of events um, for students in both YU and TFS. Uh, and they're welcome to participate in these campus events. Currently, they're held online. Um, so we have our awesome student life coordinator, Ali Noor in Ontario, and awesome student activities coordinator, Pauline Tiongson in British Columbia, who are leading these events. So I would recommend, um, if you're interested in joining these events, to join the Facebook groups to keep up to date on um, these events that help build student community and inclusion. So if you go on Facebook, Facebook, there are some group search terms that you can input in order to connect with these groups. In Ontario, if you search for why you engage now, you'll be able to connect um, and join the group. And in British Columbia, you can um, search for YU Student Life. And as I've mentioned, these are open to both YU and TFS students. So I would highly recommend uh, getting in touch. We have some awesome events actually that are happening in the in the coming um, days. Actually today, Ali Noor is hosting uh, a really cool Talk Tuesday event on Cobra Kai, where everybody's gonna join in and talk about um, this great show I'm going to be joining in as well. So I definitely recommend it. I'm going to um, put the links to these events in the chat um, right after um, we're, we wrap up with the webinar. And also uh, Pauline has an awesome event coming up on the Lunar New Year, which is going to be coming up on February 1st as well. So I definitely recommend um, participating in these awesome events. Um, as I mentioned, it's a great way to build connections, to make friends, and also to interact uh, with staff and, and faculty as well in a more um, fun setting. So as I mentioned, um, Ali Noor has provided us with these uh, awesome posters, really just uh, capturing the lineup of really cool events that are happening. Some of them are on um, Tuesdays, they're called Let's Talk Tuesdays, and then there are some game night Thursday events as well. Um, so it's, there's an awesome lineup as you can see. And as I mentioned, a lot of faculty and staff get involved too. Um, and it's just, it's a really fun time and I, I would definitely recommend it. 
So now we're actually gonna get into some of the common student issues that you might actually encounter in the classroom when it comes to DEI. So when we're looking at some of these common issues, some of the tips that we wanna encourage is just being respectful of in-person and virtual interactions with classmates and others, um, whether that's WhatsApp chats, social media platforms like Facebook or Instagram or YouTube, and also making sure that we're using appropriate gender pronouns as well. Um, oftentimes people will voluntarily uh, uh, provide that, um, you know, making uh, sure everyone knows that, for example, my pronouns are she and her. And that's, again, an optional thing. We, um, we would want to make sure that people feel comfortable doing it, but they don't, uh, they don't have to, because it's such a sensitive um, uh, code ground, such as gender identity and gender expression. We also want to avoid um, disrespectful, abusive behaviors, uh, you know, violating boundaries and consent um, and harassment as well. So, uh, you know, an example of this is if you are, for example, dating someone at, um, at the university or the school, making sure that each step of the way you are asking for consent when you are, for example, um, you know, wanting to hug someone or go further. And in addition to that, unacceptable behaviors that do have consequences and this is all outlined in our discrimination and harassment policies for students and our student code of conduct is that things like threats, intimidation, um, displays of racism, sexism, sexual harassment, sexual assault, um, ableism, anti-Black racism, anti-Indigenous sentiment, anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, anti-immigrant sentiment, um, homophobia, biphobia, transphobia, and any other type of prejudice or hatred towards an identifiable group um, is absolutely not tolerated. And that also includes unnecessary physical contact or uh, suggestive remarks or gestures and offensive pictures or jokes as well. So we wanna be really careful about the things that we are sharing um, with our classmates, with our faculty, with our staff, with others, especially on social media. Other common um, student issues or tips are, are really about just trying to get out of our comfort zone when we are working in group assignments. That is really an, um, a great opportunity to learn from others when you are, for example, placed in a group with um, people you might not have worked with before. It's also helpful to be um, learning how to simply interact with people from different backgrounds, perspectives, working styles and learning styles, um, as it really does prepare you for the working world and your life ahead as well. And whether you're new to Canada or not, I would highly recommend taking advantage of the experience of tapping into so many diverse cultures uh, as well. Um, something else that I just wanted to mention is about addressing inclusion issues in groups and group work. So we always want to encourage speaking in English so that um, in our group assignments and class related activities, everyone feels welcome and included and respected. Um, and this also relates to student social activities as well. And it doesn't prevent anyone from speaking um, in their own language or a different language um, on their own time or with their friends. But the whole point of this is really just to make sure that everyone can understand um, and that everyone feels a part of the group as well. And some other uh, particular issues that do come up from time to time and that I've also received uh, feedback from students on is that sometimes some students from other cultures, um, including international students, feel shy opening up due to the level uh, of fluency in English that they might have. Um, so these are some of the things that we wanna just take into consideration and be more mindful of and more welcoming of other people as well. Um, sometimes, and this is something that I think goes both ways, uh, students and faculty and staff alike um, sometimes have expressed that there's a particular uh, preconceived image of the of their country of origin, for example. Um, 
And sometimes people feel hyper vigilant about that and that makes them feel anxious and it actually becomes a barrier in terms of them interacting with colleagues and making friends as well. Um, so as I mentioned, this, this applies to students, but it also applies to faculty. And I think it's important for us to stop and pause um, sometimes in the middle of a situation where we might be mis um, you know, having a misconception or a preconceived notion about uh, a faculty team member uh, based on where they're from. So we want to we want to be careful that that is not the case and that we're giving everybody um, a fair chance and a fair shot uh, in the absence of, of any evidence to the contrary. Um, and as I mentioned, it's really helpful for all of us, myself included, to confront our own unconscious and conscious biases about someone's abilities, for example, based on how well we think that they speak English. Um, as that really does impact their access to a fulsome university and school experience. Um, there is no correlation between that and, for example, um, you know, someone's intelligence or how good they're going to be uh, in their program. So just some, you know, friendly reminders about things we want to take into consideration in order to make a more inclusive work environment and a learning environment as well. Um, one of the other big uh, issues that we often see in the post-secondary sphere is that the classroom is very much a place for debate and exchange of thoughts. And sometimes this means having uncomfortable conversations where people disagree with each other. Um, it is very much possible to have this while remaining respectful of differences at the same time. So we will um, inevitably run into these situations where people will have a different opinion than you. And this is really why we're at um, university, why we're at the film school, in order to learn from other people and other perspectives and also express our own in a mutually respectful way. Um, and I want to highlight that academic freedom of expression is balanced with the respect for the dignity of all people and that no expressions of hate towards any person or group are tolerated. So these are two things that we constantly have to keep in mind when we are um, in the post-secondary environment, um, that both things are, are equally important, making sure that people feel like they have that freedom uh, of academic expression, but also making sure that everyone feels welcome um, and that there, there are no uh, perpetuation of hate towards uh, any identifiable group. Um, and lastly, I do want to say that the classroom is very much the best place for discussions on diversity and examining class material through different lenses and the perspectives of different groups. And we absolutely welcome that. And the DEI office is committing, committed to supporting those conversations as well. So now I just wanna wrap it up with bringing this to our question and answer uh, part of the webinar. Um, and as I mentioned, you're more than welcome to connect with me at my email address, which is tjaferi at yorkvilleu.ca. And I'm just gonna stop sharing